Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about how to describe a process diagram. Let's look at this diagram in Cambridge LT16 test 2, writing task 1. So the diagram is about how sugar is produced from sugar cane. Let's first talk about the overview paragraph. It can be your second or your last paragraph. I always write the overview in my second paragraph. So when writing an overview for a process diagram, a mistake would be to say the process begins with and ends with. So what's wrong with the begin with and end with? You can see on page 133 of Cambridge Out 16, there's an answer written by a candidate who scored a 6. Let's look at the overview he or she wrote. The process consists of seven steps of various time lengths, starting by farming sugar canes and ending by dry sugar ready to use. Let's ignore the grammatical mistakes here. Now let's look at the examiner's comment. There is an overview presented in the first paragraph which summarizes the process into the farming stages and the drying stages. This summary could be more detailed, for example, farming, crushing, separating, and drying stages. That is to say, only stating the first and the last stages is not enough. It's better to include all the main stages of the process in your overview. Another mistake when writing an overview for a process diagram would be to use the term man-made process. For example, a lot of people write something like this. The manufacturing of sugar from sugar cane is a man-made process. Man-made means the process was created by people. However, there are few, if any, manufacturing processes that were invented by non-humans. So there's just no need to mention man-made. It's obvious. If it's a manufacturing process, it will be man-made. So we don't do anything fancy here. We simply summarize the main stages. As the examiner said, the main stages are farming, crushing, separating, and drying. And of course, we should start the overview with the word overall. Overall is a linear process consisting of four main stages, farming, crushing, separating, and drying. That's it. So this is our second paragraph. Now let's move on to the third and the fourth paragraphs. In these two paragraphs, we describe the process in detail. I call them details paragraph one and details paragraph two. Before we get started with the two details paragraphs, I want to talk about why in the title, the singular sugar cane is used, whereas in step one and three, the plural sugar canes is used. This is because the title is general and is talking about the crop called sugar cane. So the crop is called sugar cane. That's why it's not plural. The same is true for any crop. For example, we say how flour is produced from wheat, not wheat. How corn syrup is produced from corn, not corns. Once you get into the production steps, it is talking about physical plants and how they are handled physically. That's a completely different context. Each cane has to be harvested. So you are cutting multiple canes. Think of apples. When you harvest apples, you pick apples. When you harvest sugar cane, you cut canes. The canes are the items produced just like the apples. Now let's talk about how to group the information in the diagram. As you can see, the first two steps take place in the field. Therefore, we can group them in details paragraph 1. The remaining steps all take place in a factory, so we can group them in details paragraph 2. When describing the first stage, we should use the singular sugar cane. As I explained, you grow the crop sugar cane, singular, and then you harvest the canes, plural. So now we have the first step is to grow sugar cane and it takes about 12 to 18 months for it to mature. Now step two, harvesting. As you can see, there are two ways to harvest the canes using machines or human labor. We can actually make some comparisons between the two methods. You see, this person is removing the leaves. 
That is to say, if the canes are harvested by people, the leaves are removed first, and then the canes are chopped down. However, when using machines, the canes are harvested directly without removing their leaves. So now we have, after it has fully grown, it is harvested either manually or mechanically. The manual method involves farmers removing the leaves first and then chopping the canes, while the mechanized method uses machines to cut the canes directly. I already explained why here we need to use the plural canes. So this is our first details paragraph. Now let's move on to details paragraph two. The third step is crushing. This machine is called a mill. If you don't know what it is, you can just call it a machine. So now we have the harvested canes are then crushed in a mill to extract the juice. Both the juice and the juice are correct, but the juice is better. The idea is the juice that is in the canes. All the juice in the canes is supposed to be extracted. Even if all the juice is not extracted, it is still the intention to extract it all. So the juice is better. Here I use the to to show purpose. I will talk about some other ways to express purpose later in this video. In the next step, the juice is purified using a limestone filter. We can use a which clause to connect it to the previous clause, which is later on purified using a limestone filter. Now, step five. So in step five, the purified juice is heated in an evaporator and becomes a syrup. Now, if you describe every single step as simple like this, you may be unable to reach the required minimum word count of 150 words. We can make this sentence longer by adding the purpose of this step. Ask yourself, why is the juice heated in an evaporator? Of course, it is in order to turn the juice into a syrup. But how does the evaporator turn the juice into a syrup? Well, it turns the juice into a syrup by removing water from it. So we can add remove water to our sentence. The purified juice is heated or is boiled in an evaporator to remove water. The purpose of using an evaporator is to remove water. You need to interpret this stage a little to get the purpose. Earlier, I explained why here the juice is better than juice. However, here it is actually wrong to use the water. This is because not all the water in the syrup is removed. The syrup still contains some water, so the water would be inappropriate. I'm not done with step 5 yet. We can also make this part more specific by showing its purpose. What's the purpose of removing water? The purpose is to concentrate the juice into a syrup. Now let's replace become with concentrate and we have Next, the purified juice is boiled in an evaporator to remove water, which concentrates it into a syrup. Here, both a syrup and a syrup are correct, but a syrup is definitely a better match for this context. Normally, we don't talk about a syrup, but this is a production process with steps. One of those steps produces a substance that is a specific type of syrup. Imagine a different production process that produces two syrups, each one at a different stage. Those are two syrups. There might be a syrup produced at stage 3 and a different syrup produced at stage 6. You can't just call all of it syrup. It's more specific than that. Now this sentence becomes more detailed and therefore longer. I made this sentence longer only because I had trouble reaching 150 words. I did not do this to make my sentence more complex. So by far, we've used two ways to express purpose. To and which. Which concentrates it into a syrup. Another way to show purpose is to use so that. For example, in step 6, the syrup is put into a centrifuge. The purpose is to separate the sugar crystals. So we can say the syrup is then poured into a centrifuge so that the sugar crystals are separated. 
or we can use two. The syrup is then poured into a centrifuge to separate the sugar crystals, or use which to modify the centrifuge. The syrup is then poured into a centrifuge which separates the sugar crystals. I think this version is the best. It's not that which and so that are not good. It's just that two suits this sentence best. If you have trouble reaching 150 words, you can explain a little about how the centrifuge works. According to Wikipedia, a centrifuge is a device that separates various components of a fluid by spinning the fluid at high speed within a container. We can include information high speed in our description. So now we have the syrup is then poured into a centrifuge where it is spun at high speed to separate the sugar crystals. Now let's add the final step, drying and cooling. Finally, the crystals are dried and cooled and the end product is sugar. Now the only thing missing is the introductory paragraph. In this paragraph, we simply rewrite the diagram description. Please keep in mind that the original is perfect, it just can't be improved. The more you try to change it, the worse your rewrite might become. Why not just use the title of the diagram in our rewrite and the change produced to manufactured? Then we will also have a perfect diagram description. The diagram displays how sugar is manufactured from sugar cane. Finally, let's look at what we've covered in this video. We talked about two common mistakes when writing an overview for a process diagram. One, only state the first and the last stages. Two, call a manufacturing process a man-made process. Please don't do this. We also talked about how to group information into details paragraphs. Basically, we group those steps that have something in common into one paragraph, like these two steps both take place in the field. Finally, we talked about showing purpose. This can make your sentences more detailed, helping you reach the required minimal word count. We can use to, which, or so that to express purpose. So hoping that you guys like this video and found this helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. I will see you guys soon.